Hello, welcome to YouTube and Chill, the premier point for all your entertainment and information needs in YouTube. At this channel, I'm going to be sharing with you various videos of diverse topics with the aim of invoking that feel-good feeling you get when you are fully immersed in great content that makes you laugh, wonder, or learn something new for the day. When you're scrolling through YouTube and need some entertainment or info, think YouTube and chill. If one of my videos will not already be recommended to you, hope you enjoy and find value in my videos. Cheers! This is the first in a series of videos that I will be sharing with you some of the most captivating and fun stories that I find online of people and events that occurred at any period of time in our history as human beings. From the most interesting legends that exist to factually recorded and preserved events and the people behind them that happened from ancient history, medieval times and recent times. I call it story time. Hope you enjoy. In this video, as mentioned in the title, I will be telling the story of Marina the monk. Marina, also known as Marinos, Pelagia and Mary of Alexandria, was a Christian born in Byzantine the area that covers present-day Syria and Lebanon, in the period between 525 and 650. Details of her life are preserved in many manuscripts, including one from the 10th century, and they vary in different accounts. The most prevalent one is that she was brought up by wealthy Christian parents and was the only child in the family. Unfortunately, her mother died when she was very young and for the remainder of her life was raised solely by her father, Eugenius. She had a mainly normal upbringing as a child in a devout Christian family, living with her father. The two of them lived together until Marina grew into a young adult. By this time, Eugenius, who was also growing older, had planned to give away all of his earthly possessions and retire to the monastery in Canobin, in the Kadisha Valley of Lebanon, and live the rest of his life in prayer, fasting, and service to God. But the monastery was a place exclusively for the male gender. So he wanted to give Marina up for marriage when she was of age before proceeding to the monastery. But Marina, aware of this, was not going to allow herself to be left in the cold world alone and objected to her father's plan for her. So Marina devised a plan to move to the monastery with her father. When she told this to him, he immediately rejected the idea because of the fact that she was a female and so she would not be allowed in the monastery. Marina was determined and asked her father, Do you wish to save your soul and destroy mine? She then told him of the idea of shaving her head, changing into men's clothing, and living the rest of her life disguised as a man in the Kadisha Valley Monastery with him. Marina insisted and would not take no for an answer, and Eugenius, on seeing his daughter's strong determination, agreed to the plan. Eugenius then gave away all of his possessions and they started the journey to Canobin. Along the way, the details of the plan were executed. She shaved her hair, changed into men's clothing fit for the monastery, and they continued with the journey until they reached the valley. On arrival, she had assumed a new name, Marinos, and her soft voice was attributed to long periods of prayer and her state as a eunuch, a man who has been castrated as a sign of commitment to living a life dedicated to God without having sex or sharing children. The other monks in the monastery bought the story. Marina and Eugenius were then given the same cell where they would live together. After ten years of prayer, fasting, and worship together, Eugenius died and Marina, or Marinos as she was known, was left alone in the monastery to keep up with the created reality of her life. She became even more committed with the life of prayer, fasting, service to God, and hiding her identity. After some time, the abbot of the monastery sent her and three other monks to attend to some business on behalf of the monastery. As the journey was long, they had to rest along the way, and so they booked rooms in an inn for a night's stay. Also lodging in the inn was a soldier of the Eastern Roman Front associated with the king. The owner of the inn had a beautiful daughter who worked with him there, and the soldier saw this and took interest in her and decided to seduce her. He was successful and was able to sleep with her that night. He then instructed her, probably through fear, that in the event that she got pregnant, she should not mention him as the father of the baby. Instead, he instructed her to blame Marina for the predicament of sleeping with her and sharing the baby. So guys, at this point in the story, you may wonder, why did the soldier choose to put the blame 
specifically on Marina, and why did the inn owner's daughter agree? I can imagine the inn owner's daughter agreed to this because the soldier might have threatened to cause harm to her and her father and ruin their source of livelihood, the inn. It was convincing because he could have easily done that with a few of his soldier friends through his connection to the throne. As for why Marina, she was just a victim of circumstance probably due to her standing out from the other monks as a result of her good looks as a man, in quotes that is. The soldier no doubt will have noticed Marina and out of jealousy or a feeling of inadequacy decided to pin it on her. However, there are accounts that state that the innkeeper's daughter upon seeing Marina was struck by his desirable looks, obviously because she was a woman and decided to seduce her. Marina refused her advances according to this story and this made the daughter mad who then decided to frame Marina for having sex with her and getting her pregnant even though she had sex with the soldier in actuality. So this is another aspect of the story, another account of the story that is given, historically that is recorded. But I digress, let's get back to the story. After this ordeal, months passed and it was discovered that the inn owner's daughter was pregnant. She claimed that Marina was responsible and immediately the inn owner went directly to the monastery and caused a scene accusing Marina of impregnating his daughter. The abbot of the monastery upon hearing this did not believe it as Marina had proven her virtuous nature. He summoned for her to defend herself, but on arrival she did not deny the allegations. Instead, knelt down crying and asked for forgiveness from both of them. Marina had decided to accept the serious accusation in exchange for keeping her true identity as a woman secret. She suffered the consequences heavily and was immediately banished from the monastery by the abbot and lived as a beggar on the outskirts of the monastery. When the innkeeper's daughter had delivered, he took the baby to be raised by Marina. At this point, her life was turned upside down as she was left to fend for the baby, which was not hers, in the most challenging condition possible, with no food, clothing, or shelter. She however did not abandon the child and continued her life of prayer and worship to God. She raised the child in the same devout Christian principles despite the deplorable situation they were faced with. She regularly received food and drink from her former monk peers from the monastery, who felt pity for her. Her life continued like this for 10 years until the monks persuaded their boat to allow her back in the monastery. He did, but with strict conditions for her to abide by. She was to perform hard labor in the monastery like cooking, cleaning and garden watering and maintenance, in addition to her regular monk and monastic duties while caring for the child. Years passed and Marina herself fell ill at the age of 40 and died. When her body was being washed and prepared for burial, it was then that it was discovered that she was a woman and not a man, and so she could not have been guilty for sharing a child as a monk. The monks informed the abbot who came to Marina's corpse and cried beside her asking for forgiveness. He then sent for the inn owner, who also came and cried for forgiveness in the same manner. They prayed to God asking for forgiveness for the injustice that had been cast on Marina. The innkeeper's daughter was seriously reprimanded for her false accusation. Together with the soldier, they confessed to their plan and it is believed they were tormented by an evil spirit after Marina's burial and they spent years on her burial site crying and asking for forgiveness. During the funeral prayers, one of the monks who was blind in one eye is said to have received full sight again after he touched the body. Marina was venerated as a saint after her death for her selflessness, humility and faith in God. Today, the Coptic Orthodox Church, the Eastern Orthodox Church, and the Catholic Church in Italy, Cyprus, and Lebanon have days set aside for her remembrance and regularly pray with her name. There are prayers that are fully inspired by the legend of her existence up to this day. It is claimed by the Coptic Orthodox Church that Marina's body is kept at St. Mary Church and has not decomposed. Her legend lives on to this day. So there it is, guys the story of Saint Marina the monk, the lady who disguised herself as a man to live as a monk. Leave your comment telling me what you thought of the story and if you would like to read more about Saint Marina, I'll link my source websites in the description. Hope you enjoyed our first story time video, please like and share if you did. Thank you and have a good one.